gaming on Linux in 2025 isn't just possible anymore. It's fun, stable and in some cases even better than Windows. But it's not perfect and that's where things get interesting. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Network. I've been gaming on Linux long enough to remember when just installing a game was a heroic act of perseverance. In this video I want to give you a real unfiltered look at the state of Linux gaming in 2025. No hype, no fluff, just facts, gameplay and a little bit of sarcasm. Let's kick it off with a bold claim. Gaming on Linux has never been this smooth. Thanks to Proton, you can install a game, hit play and it launches. No wine settings ritual, no terminal black magic, just play. Steam Deck made this shift mainstream and now desktop Linux users are riding the same wave. So how's the performance? Honestly, very solid. Sometimes it's a bit lower than Windows, sometimes, shockingly, it's higher. That's the Vulkan effect in action. Games using Vulkan or well-optimized DXVK layers can fly on Linux, especially with AMD hardware. There's also no Windows update lurking in the background to sabotage your frame rate mid-fight. That alone is worth the switch. Even though I play everything on mouse and keyboard, because I'm a proper PC gamer, it's still nice to know controller support just works. DualShock, Xbox, Switch Pro, you name it, plug it in and it shows up. It's not something I use, but if you're couch gaming or playing on a Steam Deck, you're covered. Ok, here is where we hit some snags. Linux gaming has come a long way, but not everything is sunshine and 144Hz rainbows. Apex Legends used to work, but now it's blocked again. Same deal with Fortnite, Destiny 2 and a few others, and that sucks because these are huge games. But the ball is in the devs court, Valve already did the heavy lifting. On the bright side, more online games do work now than ever before. And for gamers like me, I'm barely noticing what's missing. Here's a hot take, gaming on Linux just feels cleaner, no bloatware, no forced background telemetry, no mysterious performance dips because your OS decided to scan your SSD during a boss fight. You can game, edit, stream, tinker or just leave your system alone and enjoy the peace and quiet. It's your system, not Microsoft's. Part of what makes Linux gaming great in 2025 is the tooling. Want performance stats? Mangohood. Want FSR upscaling on any game? Gamescope. Want shaders that make your game look like an oil painting? VK Basalt. You can even run your epic games and GOG titles with Lutris or Heroic Launcher. And Proton App and Proton Plus makes updating to the latest Proton GE a breeze. It's like a Linux gaming toolbox ready to go. Ah yes, the age-old question. What's the best distro for gaming? Short answer, use what works for you. But if you want some names... Nobara, built for gaming, tweaks out of the box. PicaOS, great balance between GNOME, KDE and gaming tools. Fedora, clean, stable, up-to-date, great driver support. PapOS, getting gold but still reliable. Linux Mint, for those who like it simple and solid. So is it worth it? Short answer, hell yes. Long answer, it depends on the kind of gamer you are. Casual, indie, single player gamer, you're golden. Competitive, online gamer who needs every title, better double check the Proton DB first. Tinkerer, enthusiast, forced advocate, you're gonna have a blast. Gaming on Linux in 2025 isn't a pipe dream anymore. It's real, it's awesome and for more and more people, it's enough. If you're sick of Windows nonsense or just curious what all the bus is about, try it, dual boot, test it on a second drive or just fire up a live USB. You may be surprised. Thanks for watching. Smash the like button if you've ever rage quit because of a missing .so file. Subscribe if you think DMS is a love language and tell me in the comments what games are you playing on Linux in 2025.